Legacy Moon, and this is True Crime and Mysteries. Live at 5, Metro Atlanta families coming home to a notice saying their home is no longer theirs. Our Atlanta News First investigation, stolen home finds houses are being sold without the owners even knowing it happened. Atlanta News First investigator Sierra Cummings is live at 5 outside the DeKalb County Courthouse for us. So, Sierra, you're learning there is little oversight for property fraud here in Georgia. Yeah, stealing a home may not be as hard as you think. That's according to the experts. It usually starts with some kind of forged paperwork, like a fake deed or a fraudulent loan. And in those cases, the home ends up wrongfully foreclosed. And we found it can happen in Georgia often because our foreclosure process in this state has little government oversight. The whiteboard, the markers, the instructors. This is no classroom, but there's a lot that can be learned here at the DeKalb County Foreclosure Auction. 146,000. Last and final call for $190,000. So they have to tender funds in full once they purchase. So they'll have the money on them. Although on the front steps of the courthouse, the bidding process is not run by government or any state official. It's a private company called Auction.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Staff here have no role in investigating whether a home should or should not be on the foreclosure auction. It works like this. If a homeowner repeatedly doesn't pay their mortgage loan, the loan will default. The debt will rise. And if the homeowner and bank don't agree on a repayment plan, the bank informs the foreclosure agency to put the property up for auction. Yes. Ten homes were on the list this time, but in the months before, these homeowners say they had their properties on the whiteboard too. Here are their allegations. I lived in my home for 10 years and it was wrongfully taken from me. My home was stolen from me. Identity theft. I have asked for due process in DeKalb County, Georgia Superior Court. My house that has been paid for since 1979 was stolen from me. In my home of nearly 10 years was stolen from me by fraudulent foreclosure practices. They all tell us their cases are similar to Eric Clark's. We first introduced you to the father last fall. He got a letter on his door that his home had been sold out from under him at a foreclosure auction. He claimed in a police report that someone took out a fraudulent second loan on his home, forging his signature. The father never paid the loan because he says he didn't know about it. What's more, he accuses fraudsters of also filing fake deeds on his property, an issue county clerks say is common because under current Georgia law, to file paperwork in the clerk's office, you don't need proof of identification. It's harder to cash a $5 check at a bank than it is to record a deed that could steal the title to someone's home that they've worked for decades to build up equity in. Attorney Rick Allenbeck fights cases of deed theft, wrongful foreclosures, fraudulent loans, the main ingredients in the recipe for real estate fraud. What makes it easy for them to be able to do the fraudulent loan? I mean, I, if I really wanted to, I could I could get your social security number and all your private information, you know, have people who can get that. I mean, I wouldn't do it because like... It, it's illegal. It's illegal. <laughs> the 30-year veteran of law argues property fraud leading to wrongful foreclosures is rampant in Georgia because it's a non-judicial state. The courts only get involved after a lawsuit is filed. He believes the court should oversee the entire process from the beginning. For instance, if any bank or debtor wants to foreclose, they must go to court to prove why. Where there's some judicial supervision, it it's inherently more fair. $145,000. While real estate lobbyists seek efficiency in property sales, attorneys like Alan Beck says slowing down the process with more safeguards and verification steps from the deed filing to loans could stop stolen homes. People have a lot, a lot of stuff getting thrown at them every day. Um, how to get to work, how to you know, get my kids fed or get them lunch. You know, there, there's so much coming at people these days, but if it happens to you, then it, it's, it's a life altering event.
it can take years and hundreds of thousands of dollars to resolve a case like this one. But we have a tip for you. You can sign up your property on something called the Property Fraud Registry. It's statewide. Now, here's the thing. It doesn't stop the fraud from happening, but it gets you ahead of it so you can be largely in front of it before it's too late. We're going to walk you through that entire process coming up here at 6 o'clock. But you can find our entire investigation on AtlantaNewsFirst.com. At the DeKalb County Courthouse, I'm Sierra Cummings, Atlanta News First. Welcome back, current subscribers, new subscribers, and those of you who are here for the very first time. If you are not subscribed, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Stick around. We're some good people right here. And if you don't mind, please do not forget to thumbs up the video. So for today's video, we are going to be talking about title fraud in Georgia. I did a video on this, um, I think a month or two ago, and it's like it just keeps on growing and growing and growing. And it just so happens the only reason why I'm focused on Georgia is because in the beginning when I found out about how easy it was to steal somebody's home, it happened to have happened in Georgia. So that's kind of, um, you know, the path that I've been on. I will have that video link in the description of this video so that you'll be able to watch it if you haven't seen it. Now, keeping in the spirit of, um, or I should say, the topic, we're going to be talking about some more um, title and property for fraud that has been going on in Georgia, and also some ways that you can kind of, sort of, protect yourself. So let's get into it. Before we officially get into it, I just want to say I am using a new earpiece so if the sound is not right I know y'all will let me know so please do so in the comments M imagine that you are at home you're chilling in your kitchen or kicking it with the family in the front yard and somebody post a sign on your door saying that um, it, this is your final notice you've got to go your house is being foreclosed and you're trying to figure out what's going on because you are either making your payments, you're not behind, you don't have five, six, and ten different mortgages, or you simply own your house and have owned it for several years. And you're trying to figure out what is going on. Well, apparently it is just that easy for someone to take your home. I'd like to give you the definition of a forged deed. It is exactly how it, sound, how it sounds. It's a deed not signed by the owner, but by a person claiming to be the owner without the true owner's knowledge or consent. This deed fraud and uh, title stealing encompasses a lot. So in most cases, you'd have to call, you know, like the court system in the state of Georgia to perhaps get a consultation on how to proceed and what you can do if this has been done to you. What I can tell you is that if you are the perpetrator of this crime, you could uh, be fined up to $250,000 and serve anywhere between 3 to 15 years in prison. What I just said sounds so easy, but it's not. They really make it sound like it's kind of easy peasy to get this rectified, but it really is not. You know, they say that examining a suspect's signature on a document is uh, a way to um, find out whether or not this deed was fraudulently obtained or signed. Uh, you know, a forensic person could uh, look at it and examine it and decide whether the signature is uh, genuine or not. They tell you that 
careful examination of several facets of signatures, including line quality, speed, letter, letter formation, height, relationships, and size, all goes into play in order for them to determine has someone fraudulently stolen your deed, forged your title, you know, whatever. It's just easy peasy. But it's not that easy. I forgot to mention that the, of course, you know, if you are a victim of this, you can start off, I would start off at the courthouse and then work my way back to like the police. But in the state of Georgia, the Attorney General's Special Prosecutor prosecutions unit prosecutes identity fraud, securities fraud, and mortgage fraud. And of course, if you have been defrauded, then you would contact this office. But as I said, it just isn't that easy. And it just isn't as fast as I'm saying it. We are getting ready to get into this next clip. And it is about a family who had property that had been in their family for generations. It was just taken away by some Joe Blow who was able to forge some documents and take over. Property latches up. Is a somber stroll down memory lane for Trahon Brown. It's very emotional. I had a lot of memories, yo. About two decades worth, a family home is 69-year-old Uncle Evans Lee Jr. owned. Now, the family ownership is gone, and so is Uncle Evans Lee Jr. Every time I come here, I just want to cry, you know, bust down and cry because he gone. I that's, that's the only person I had left in my life. Although Evans died in 2022, the case of alleged fraud only just began to unravel. I would like to see Mr. Watson prosecuted to the full extent. He's talking about Randy Watson. The family filed a police report against the 43-year-old who submitted paperwork in probate court days after Uncle Evans Lee Jr. died. Randy sought to inherit whatever assets remained. This probate court petition shows Randy signed a sworn statement that he was the only child and sole heir. No additional proof or supplemental documentation was required. As a result, the probate judge appointed Randy Watson the administrator of the estate. Randy gained access to everything his father, Evans Lee Jr., left behind. Just one problem. Evans Lee was not his father. In fact, Evans Lee was no father at all. He had no kids, which means Randy Watson is not his son, not even close. Who is he to Mr. Evans? Um, he's not related to him. A certified DNA test proved it. The results show Randy is not even a family member, that there is a 0.00% chance the late Evans Lee Jr. was his dad. This was a court-ordered paternity test, which only came after the true family got when someone filed probate paperwork on their uncle's estate before they could. Trahan and his wife learned about it once they tried to file their own probate paperwork. After more than a year of waiting, a judge ruled in favor of Trahan and his family, citing there was neither evidence to prove paternity nor documentation that Randy had a right to inherit anything. By the time it was proven Randy was not the so-called sole heir and the judge ordered everything to be turned back over to the true family, it was too late. There was never an opportunity to um, go in the home, clean the home out, none of that. Cleared it all out. Cleared it all out. The DeKalb County home itself foreclosed and auctioned off. Most of the belongings and sentimental items gone too. None of it as valuable as Uncle Evans Lee himself, an urn with his ashes also nowhere to be found. When officers asked, Randy told police he'd been robbed of all the items, the valuables, the money, and even Evans Lee's ashes, according to this police report. An allegation the family does not believe. Atlanta News First Investigates discovered receipt records from a local disposal company in the time period Randy had access to the home. The receipts revealed items were moved from the Lithonia property at least twice last year more than 60,000 pounds worth. 
The most unbelievable matter for the family begins here. Trahan maintains his uncle was adamantly against cremation, that he wanted to be buried alongside his wife. But he was cremated. Yeah. And whose decision was that? Randy Watson. It goes back to this funeral home, F.L. Sims. The owner confirmed to Atlanta News First Investigates, Randy Watson identified himself as the son and told the business to cremate Evans Lee Jr. The funeral home did not require proof of kinship or an ID or any other documentation. They simply took his word for it. Is the attorney here, the director here? No one's here. When asked to talk about this case and its policies, the funeral home would not interview with us. There is no Georgia law that requires a funeral home to confirm if someone is truly next of kin. And because Evans Lee died while in hospice, the funeral home was tasked with completing the death certificate. Based on the information they say Randy provided to them, they filled in the death certificate, a document now riddled with false information. Decedent's son, Randy. Wrong. Again, Evans Jr. had no children. Decedent's birthplace, Nebraska. Wrong. Evans Jr. was a Louisiana native. Decedent's father's name? Unknown. Wrong. Evans Lee was a junior, meaning his father shared the same name. Because ain't no way in the world you could just let anybody come in your establishment and say, hey, I, I am the next of kin, without even checking their background and seeing if it's, 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 it's true. Probate attorney James Clifton. I've seen cases that are, you know, absolutely uh, heartbreaking where things like this happen because the person committing fraud, they have no care. Is why the 15-year veteran probate lawyer urges loved ones to secure three documents before death, a will, a medical directive, and a financial power of attorney. Since Evans Lee had no will, Clifton notes exploiting the probate process was easier. It feels like it's, a, it's too little too late. Right. It's, it's unfortunate because that is oftentimes the result, is that the bad actor receives the funds, you know, by selling the property or whatever, and then it's gone. They spend it. He argues cases like these criminal infractions, if it can be proven, should be criminally prosecuted. And it's hard even being on a property right now, just looking at it. And Evans Lee Jr. worked in construction, fixing homes, fixing problems for others. His family hopes to fix this for him. Uncle Lee was a good man. He did a lot of things for a lot of people. Lots of people. That story right there is why I decided to do this video. It just enraged me. It's bad enough you are dealing with the loss of a loved one, but then you find out that some common criminal from off the street that you're not even related to can just come in and steal your family member's property. And, and as far as I'm concerned, last bit of dignity. Now, I don't know how they do things in Georgia. But I can remember I had an uncle and, you know, he lived with my grandmother from time to time. He passed away. When I tell you, and this was in the state of Ohio, when I tell you that my grandmother and my dad and my uncles went to the funeral home to make arrangements, they find out that my uncle had a wife and had had said wife for over 20 years. We knew nothing about it. And therefore, my grandmother and my dad, my uncles, they were not allowed to proceed with any type of funeral arrangement. Mind you, they found out that my uncle was married when they went to the funeral home. There was no, he had no will, no power of attorney, none of the things, no, uh, you know, executor to the estate. Now, the family was fortunate enough, and his wife explained, you know, the situation and why he kept their marriage a secret. And she was nice, and she went ahead and let the family go ahead and plan to do all the arrangements. She had no problem with it. So 
we were fortunate and it, it was a nice peaceful thing but I just don't understand how somebody who's not even a family member is able to make claims and even decide to cremate the body now you know I've done videos before where I talk about how you know black people they don't like to be cremated I don't have a problem with it but a lot of people do and so I, I just I mean, what kind of person are you to not only steal a family's legacy away, but then to just do the uncle like that, have him cremated? And by the way, I don't, I don't even know if they mentioned it in the story, but I, you know, further research showed that the family never got the ashes. They don't even have the ashes. That is just awful. Now, if you are wondering how the people of the state of Georgia can protect themselves from identity fraud and, and, you know, all of these things, getting their titles stolen from them, their homes, their properties, their legacies, I can tell you that Georgia has this filing system. It's what's called FANS. I won't say it's a filing system. I'll say it's a system. And it's called FANS, F-A-N-S, which stands for the Filing Activity Notification System. So that system was designed to offer the people of Georgia the ability to receive notifications when certain real estates and personal property records are filed with index and date, and it's transmitted by the clerk, the clerks of Superior Court throughout the state of Georgia. So basically, because we know a scammer is going to scam, the uh, state of Georgia, like the clerk's office, you're going to get notifications if there's a change to that deed. These notifications can come to you by computer or by phone. So you will be able to, like, a meet, like if somebody goes well, now, I don't know the turnaround time. Let me not say that, but let me give an example. If someone has gone into the clerk's office and presented these forged documentations saying that they own your property or doing deeds, transfers, or whatever, you will get that alert via computer or phone, however you prefer. And so I guess that will prevent someone from being able to, to just take your your stuff away from you and like I said I don't know what the turnaround time is for that I would like to think if somebody comes in with a D transfer or any of the things like that I would like to think that the clerk is entering it in you know right then and there and the alert pops up that afternoon or, or, or at least by the next day for the homeowners. Now, if you live in Douglas County, you also have the option of a website that, and it's an alert system that's going to provide you with notifications if things are going on with your property. I just wanted to drop this video to bring awareness to people about how easy it is to apparently present fraudulent documents and steal someone's property you know and like I said before I'm just this happens to be the state of Georgia that I'm focused on for the video but this happens all over there are other states that I have looked into and, and it's just the same way it's easy for someone to come in and take ownership of your property so I just want to bring awareness to that and I just wanted to do this video if you didn't see the other video I did about the title fraud in the state of Georgia that link will be in the bio and as I mentioned earlier this is a new microphone and if the sound if it just ain't it for you let me know and I know that you will that is it and that's all.